I certainly like days where there is little to no wind, which makes coming out of the marina just a little less stressful. It's late September, and we really weren't sure what the weather was going to throw at us, but for the first leg of our journey, cruising conditions could not have been better. We're making our way to one of our favorite locations in the South Gulf Islands, Annette Inlet. While the entrance to the inlet looks wide, you do want to take care and follow a narrow channel into the anchorage, especially at low tide. With no one else around, we were able to put out a good scope of about 5 to 1. Certainly no danger of swinging into anyone over the course of the evening. And I think, in my opinion anyways, this is where Annette Inlet really shines. Going into the evening, it's quiet. You can just sit back, watch the sun disappear behind the trees. And in our case, watch a moon rise up through the clouds. It was a fantastic fall evening. Good morning. So here we are at uh, Annette Inlet, getting ready to pull away and head to our next point, which will be Sydney Spit. But we sure have enjoyed this spot. I think one of the reasons this is my one of my favorites is there's no services here at all. It's shallow. There's a big rock at the entrance to get past on your way in. Um, so it's not usually all that busy. And at this time of year in September, it's fantastic. There's only two other boats at the far end. We feel like we have the place to ourselves. There's um, seals to watch, there's lots of shorebirds, some kingfishers, some geese that have been here. Um, peaceful, it smells good at this time of year especially, which I love. So this is a great spot to hang out. And I'd, I'd recommend it if you're not looking for the nightlife, lots of activities, this is just a nice peaceful way to spend your time. And the weather conditions continue to improve, hard to imagine. Uh, literally no wind and seas were as calm as a bathtub as we continued to make our way down Captain Passage towards Sydney Spit. And once Journey was safely tied up to a mooring buoy, we made our way on shore to start our walk along the Sydney Spit nature area, which uh, was truly a remarkable experience. There are a number of trails that you can follow depending on how adventuresome and how uh, strong those sea legs are, I guess. After spending days on the water, uh, you can elect to take a shorter hike or you can sort of do the entire uh, spit and uh, get the full meal deal, which is what Barb and I decided to do. And you come across some amazing uh, viewpoints to look back out onto the water. One of the things we did not know about this area was the fact that back in the early 1900s, it had an industrial flair to it, and in terms of making bricks. 
A lot of these bricks were shipped uh, both down to Vancouver and out to Victoria where they were used in building construction projects. But uh, you can still see some of the remnants of uh, their efforts as these bricks are scattered along the beach area. As you uh, continue to walk through this area and, and uh, this time of year especially, uh, you begin to pick up the birds. And I'll tell you, I've never heard so many different birds. It just sounded like an incredible symphony. There's certainly no question that the Sydney Spit area offers an awful lot in terms of things to see, hear, and uh, some amazing views to take in. And that's just in the forested areas. There is still another area to be explored, and if the tide allows, you can get out onto the Spit itself and enjoy a long walk on sandy beaches. was tempting to uh, stay the night on the uh, mooring ball, we decided that we would push on to our next destination and that was Genoa Bay. Like Barb indicated earlier, uh, cruising at this time of year means that uh, chances are pretty good that you're going to come into anchorages like this and pretty well have the whole place to yourself and I have to admit that that is kind of special. Well, with morning, uh, we decided to pull anchor and start the journey back towards Ladysmith up through Samson Narrows. One of the things we noticed while cruising uh, this uh, past fall was the number of very large ships that have been anchored throughout the uh, southern Gulf Islands and all the way up into the Ladysmith area, as a matter of fact. And we were wondering if this is not a result of the COVID situation that these tankers and container ships uh, are not able to uh, get into the Vancouver Harbor area and they have to stay basically quarantined uh, way out here because we've never seen this many ships. We've been, we've been cruising eight years now and uh, it's the first time that we've seen so many of these large ships uh, scattered throughout the uh, Gulf Island area. Kind of makes for a, a different cruising experience, that's for sure. <laughs> 